people. And we pray your blessing on the offering. That it will be just so blessed of you and used of you. And that the gospel of Jesus Christ goes onward. And the church ever be made ready to meet her Lord. We thank you God for you have provided for us all things. Now bring the word into our heart. To the glory and the praise of Christ. And our hearts rejoice in Jesus' name. And together we all said, Amen. Amen. Have a seat. Bible's open to the Gospel of John. To the Gospel of John. And we are there in what is uh, a very beautiful chapter. Uh, a favorite of so many. So many. It's John chapter 14. And... Um, bringing to you some encouraging words uh, concerning hope and peace in a broken world, in a busted world. And as we are uh, just still celebrating Pentecost, we're still celebrating Easter, we're still celebrating the glory of our Christ every day. And here, hope and peace in a broken world. Um, so... You know, it's been good to be back in church, as we mentioned. But I want you to uh, really evaluate within your heart, how did it feel to be back in church? I want to give some thought to it. How are you, uh, after we've been through this pandemic time, and we're still in it, but... You know, we see the faithfulness of God and, you know, and we all went through some, uh, really some major change. There was just a real shift in our, in our life. And all of a sudden it was just like shut down, pull down, pull the blinds and, and we're behind the walls. We missed the gathering together. And we had to we had to lay hold of the moment where we were and, and and how it is. And we as the church we began to learn worship at home, maybe in ways we never did before. Hopefully we began to appreciate who we are in Christ. The Holy Spirit in our life. Our Heavenly Father who never leaves us. He was so different. And I pray that as you see where we are now on this second Sunday of regathering here in, in the uh, great month of June, the second Sunday of June, I pray that you know within you that your life is different than what it was since the middle of March. You have grown in the Lord. You, you've come to appreciate new things and you've come to really devalue some other things that really aren't that important. But above all, your heart, your heart is different. You're not quite the same as you were. Because you have been experiencing God more on a personal note. I pray that you're different. I pray that you are more in love with the Lord Jesus. I pray that it's now not just a continuing on of the same old, same old in your life. For truly as being indwelt by the Spirit of God, He has led you in ways and you have encountered Him in experiences. You have been through heartaching moments, longing, dark journeys, wondering, perhaps even fears, will we ever be the same again? So to say, and yet through that, you also lay hold of the fact, no, we're not going to be the same again. And you brought that closer and you said, and you come to know, I'm not the same. 
I love my Lord. I, I confess to the Lord of my, my, my emptiness, my religious ways, my, my taking advantage of Him and portraying myself, lauding myself, making myself more important than the Lord. All this has changed. He's the Lord. And celebrating the wonderful God and that we have him. I want us to look here at the middle of the chapter first in John 14 and, uh, and, and leading into the greatness of this wonderful salvation that we have in Christ and the beauty of what it means in your heart and in your life. And then perhaps we'll go back to the first part of the chapter and lead right back into it. Maybe we'll end up in the book of Acts. We'll see how the Spirit leads. And here at John 14, we're going to begin in verse number 19. Hope and peace in a broken world. Get the uh, conversation with Jesus here in the upper room. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, you will live also. I pray in your Bibles you underscore that sentence. Because I live, you will live also. Beautiful words. At that day, you will know that I am in the, my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him, make our home with him. He who does not love me, does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but my Father's who sent. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Bring to your remembrance... All things that I said to you, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your heart not be troubled, <clears throat> neither let it be afraid. That's the words he started the chapter with. So he goes on and says a few more words. He says, I'm not going to talk to you too much more about it right now. He says, one day you'll know it. You'll know it. Speaking there, first and foremost, of Pentecost that was coming. But beautiful words. You'll know that I am in the Father and He is in me and we are in you. When Pentecost happens, before that, you know when you're born again. But He says, in that day, in that day. He's talking about His return. In that day. He said, when I come back in that day, you're going to know it. And he's going to take us home to be in a beautiful eternity. So marvelous and so glorious. So beyond. Beyond what the mortal mind can lay hold of right now. So these words of the Lord. And uh, in these verses here at 15. And Jesus reveals here God's plan to send the Holy Spirit. He reveals the plan of God. And um, the Comforter as the Word of God says, the Comforter, it's also, he's known as the Strengthener, he's known as the Advocate, the Holy Ghost. So quickly in this little paragraph, there's packed into here six beautiful things. Six beautiful things. So number one, quickly, number one, uh, we learn that he will be a gift from the Father. The Father will send, and he says, I will pray the Father, and He will send the Holy Ghost. This is a gift from the Father. The Father gifted us Jesus Christ. 
the gifting of God to us. Everything we have from God is a gift. Amen? It is a gift from God. Life is a gift from God. Another day that we have is a gift from God. The next breath is a gift of God. The clothes that you have is a gift from God. Every possession you have is a gift of God. Your life, your love, your family, everything is a gift from God. He is God. He is the Lord. And He is in all. He is above all. He is through all. He is the Lord. And uh, it is a gift. And so a true believer is one that has been drawn by the Holy Spirit, the love of our God, born again, and is indwelt by the Spirit of God. So you're going to know it. You're going to know this gift. Because the moment you say yes to Christ, the moment you ask Him into your heart and life, that very moment, there's a, about 30, 40 some different things happen to you, as one old preacher said one time. And uh, he said, the main thing is, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. He comes to live in you. And uh, so we find here, remember whenever Jesus was in uh, preaching in John chapter 7 at the Feast of the Tabernacle, he said, come to me all who are weary, thirsty, and I will give you to drink, I will give you life. Come unto me. And then John would immediately add, This he said about the Spirit which those who believe in him would receive. Number two, number two, number one, it'll be a gift from the Father. Number two, that this Spirit will be another. It'll be another. He'll be so much like Jesus, just like Jesus. He'll be another. And, uh, you know, it was so amazing that this. The Spirit, he will, he said, he will take over the work in you that I've been doing with you. Remember, Jesus had him for three years. And now he'll take over the work. But he'll do in you what I tell him to. And what I tell him to do is what I hear what the Father tells me to tell him to do. And it's just such a beautiful thing. But he'll take over the work in you. And you're going to realize it, how much closer you are with him. You know, Jesus, uh, here with the disciples... You know, he, he cared for them day in and day out, night after night, day after day. And how many times would they just lost sight of him? Even if they were with him, they would just start to come apart at the seams. Well, they're troubled here. You go back to John 14 there in the first part of the chapter. Don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going away. It is needful for me to go away. Don't be troubled. And he's explaining them why. Why? This is what the whole chapter is about. And when the Holy Spirit comes, He's going to take over the work in you, and you're going to actually know that you're closer with me than what you are right now. You're going to find it out. Because now He's going to in, in dwell in you. Not just touch you, hold you like another human being as I do, but He's going to be living in here. He's going to live in there. He's going to be so close in you. And it's going to take you even into greater heights. So this here, actually in the Greek, it is uh, another kind. And just, just like the Father. Number three. He says here, the Spirit will be an abiding presence. Continual. Continual. A child of God has the Spirit of God living in him and will be forever. Just continual. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Jesus in His humanity, He could only be as the divine God, but He in His humanity, He could only be in one place at one time. And they had to find Him. They had to go after Him. And many times they found Him, He was in prayer with His Father. And, uh, but, and we find here that He will never leave you. Now, we go into Hebrews 13, verse 5, and the writer says, be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now in this verse, it comes through in probably the strongest Greek, if I would say negative, as I found. The strongest Greek negative, meaning I will never leave you. He says, he said it with such power, with such authority. Never! Will I leave you? Never will I leave you. In so many of our homes today, children are busted apart because mom or dad has left. And no other parent will say, but I'm here. And I will never leave you. 
You know what it is to be forsaken by a friend. You know what it is to be forsaken by someone. Someone who's no longer faithful to you. Who no longer desires to be with you. The Holy Spirit is not like that. He will never leave you. He is God. He will never leave you. Number four. Number four. The Spirit will reveal truth to you. So He's the revelator of truth. He's the one that teaches you. He shows you all these things. He's the Spirit of truth. There's no confusion with Him. The devil is the author of confusion. He reveals all truth. And um, there's no deceit in the Holy Ghost. There's no falsehood in the Holy Spirit. He is truth. Christ is truth. God the Father is truth. They are all truth. They are of the same person, of the same substance. They are three in the one. They are co-equal, co-eternal, each in their perspective uh, 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 positions and persons and united and in one. And therefore they all work in total unity. And this is you, you know. As a child of God, the Holy Spirit's in here. Jesus is on the throne. The Father there in glory as well. And, and as a child of God, you know, with the Holy Spirit, you're just, you're just tucked right in here. You're just tucked right in there. How great is our God. And so truth, if He's the Spirit of truth, that's what He wants from you and I. That's what He wants from you. Truth. Now, you know as well as I do, no matter who it is in your life, you want that person to be truthful with you. Correct? Tell me the truth. Be to me truth. And you strive to be the same to that person. Truth. Be the same way with the Holy Ghost. Just be truthful with Him. Confess your sins. Tell him what you need. Talk to him. He's your dearest friend. He's right with you all the time. Get used to talking to him. There's probably no other doctrine that needs to be more taught in the church than the doctrine of the Holy Ghost. He's a person. Talk to him. He's right in here. He's right in here. You know, I'm all, you know, Dana, she's coming close here. She's just about four weeks away from... Uh, delivering her first child, Lord willing, you know, and you mommies can identify with this, and you often have to wonder how the baby, you know, hears mama's voice while still in here, hears all the, the noises in mama's body, and as she sings and talks to her baby, the baby hears the voice. He hears your voice. He's in here. As a child of God, He's in here. And so, it, it is, a, it is a, an indwelling that human psychology knows nothing about. But you do, Christian. You do. 